The worst cards in the history of Hearthstone. Hey, buddy, watch this. Yeah, that's right. You guys, the Regis Kilbin community, pick 10 cards that you think are the worst ever made for Hearthstone, and the three behind me aren't even on the list. That means Hemet Nessingware is better than the 10 cards in this video. Major Domo, better. Warsong Commander, better. You guys didn't even pick these, so you know we're in for some real winners in this video. There are some bad cards in the game for sure. But before we jump into the list, let's take a look at our sponsor for this video. It's Surfshark. If you don't know Surfshark, it's a VPN that will encrypt your online data and protect your privacy. And I think the coolest aspect of Surfshark is that you can set your location to anywhere in the world, allowing you to do things like access shows, movies you wouldn't otherwise be able to on places like Disney Plus and Netflix. I know sometimes I get those annoying, uh, this is not available in your region uh, notices. And with Surfshark, you can help avoid that. So if you wanna check out Surfshark, which I think you should, check the description below. There is an 85% discount right now with the code Regis. My name, R-E-G-I-S. Check it out, let me know what you think. And now let's jump back into the 10 worst cards. All right, starting off with the number 10 card here, it's Temperus. <laughs> Can't believe he's actually only number 10. He seems so terrible. And frankly, I would put him higher on this list. Uh, as, as somebody puts it here very eloquently in the comments they left about Temperus, its only redeeming quality is that it allows you to see your opponent pull off some sick combos as they kill you. And uh, somebody else summed it up really nicely too. Temperus is just Temperus, a card so bad that its very name is the only explanation that you need. And yeah, they're right, of course. The problem with Temperus is giving your opponent two turns is always gonna be way worse when you pass that initiative to them. The upside you're gonna reap on the return is so much harder to overcome the instant value that Hearthstone can provide when you're able to attack and dictate multiple turns in a row first. Most people can set up lethal scenarios like that, if not just outvalue like crazy, uh, play a Lotheb to stop you from doing anything in your first Temperus turn anyway etc etc so it's easily countered it's far too susceptible to setting them up for crazy plays and that's why temperus was always a liability when you randomly generated it in hand you were like oh my god can i actually get this off is it gonna work spoiler alert, no it never does and then of course it never ever ever gets played in real constructed hearthstone decks this is a very very bad card moving over here to murabi or as that's <laughs> one person submitted murabi <laughs> It's the funniest spelling to me for some reason. No capitalization, but here we go. Murabi. What? Murabi? There was a card called Murabi Freeze Shaman. Whoa, 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 pal. Blizzard would never make something that stupid. In fact, they did. And not only were they stupid enough to make it, I was stupid enough to give Murabi three stars in a review. I think I was hopeful that, like, hey, they're printing all these freeze cards. They must know it's going to work. They must be building out some really cool thing for the future and they didn't. It never got there. We never saw any free stuff make sense. Turns out Murabi was way too much of a value generating card and, and gave up far too much tempo for the way we play Hearthstone. Of course, there's a lot of potential value there, but without being able to play stats on board, giving up six mana, you know, having to have other follow-ups immediately pushes this to like a 10 mana card late in the game uh, when you need those combos. It just never worked out. So Murabi Free Shaman has failed time and time again. I'm still kind of waiting for the day, maybe like 12 years from now, Shaman has finally accrued enough freeze pieces and Murabi actually makes sense. I don't know if we'll ever get there, but you know, one card every third or fourth expansion, maybe somewhere down the road, Murabi actually makes the cut. Next up here is Angry Chicken. I was actually a little surprised to see this one on the list because really when you look at, uh, bad cards there's kind of like two ways to think about them right one is like cards that don't really do much like angry chicken others are cards that actively hurt you like temperous and i think the cards like temperous the ones that punish you when you play them deserve the highest spots in this list nonetheless a lot of people voted for angry chicken and uh <laughs> one person said at least he has leroy oh wait which of course is a twist on leroy's line at least i've got chicken <laughs> <laughs> that pair has been broken apart. And then, uh, amusingly enough, two people misspelled chicken. That's two separate comments. He's a chicken and mm, chicken. I don't know how that happened. Maybe that's a translation in another part of the world. That's how it's spelt. But 
Uh, for us, Angry Chicken, I don't really know why he's on this list. He's a harmless card. He's certainly not any good. He doesn't make the cut and list. It's obviously very, very difficult to activate his enraged style effect here because you got to buff him. Maybe some world with scavengers ingenuity could pull off some angry chicken plays, but yeah, he's 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 weak. I don't think he's like terrible. I wouldn't have him on the list here in the top ten. Certainly, just a harmless card, a fun uh, classic card. Certainly inspired a lot of memes among the community. Has named a podcast after himself, so I think he's done all right in the scheme of things. <laughs> Desert Obelisk is a toaster. <laughs> I don't even means but that's a perfect rare insult here for the desert obelisk uh zero five with the effect lose the game i think that's pretty appropriate now that said we did actually pull off a desert obelisk combo one time won a game day one of saviors of old doom so we know it's possible it's just very 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 unlikely i think you could fix this really easily by either making it hit only the enemy hero or maybe having the damage scale in some way with a number of desert obelisks so instead of like this binary, if you have three, you deal five. It's like if you have three, maybe you deal 15 and they all deal 15. That could be really cool for Desert Obelisk. But as it stands, it's so hard to get all of these assembled on board. Even when you do, the payoff is pretty minimal. So yes, if you spend all that much time, all that much mana trying to get this done, indeed, you do lose the game. Apparently, you could toast some bread along the way as well. Moving on here to Harbinger Celestia. You hate to see legendaries on this list, by the way. It's like, man, somebody opened this in a pack and got stuck with this total toaster card that is completely useless. Uh, as one person put it so well, man, this card is great. A 5-6 with stealth for only four mana. That's insane. Oh, wait, now it's a B. <laughs> I don't know where they got B exactly. Uh, but also, don't you love paying four mana for a Mecharu? That puts it really nicely. Nice boom stay project reference there with a cheap bad card but that's exactly how it works right it's like a mirror entity that lets your opponent know what's going on it costs more mana it allows them to play into it very visibly i think there was some cool idea here of like maybe this can deny big deck so they only have big minions to play you're gonna get one of their big minions for four mana but that's just not how hearthstone works we have mana curves people play low cost things that are value generators even in big decks there was like big priest out there for a while but even that had things like barns that they could drop into this and it's like oh my god a three four and of course that's only one matchup across a million hearthstone games you're gonna play why would you want to put harbinger celeste in your deck for one matchup just concede against priest it's much easier that way anyway so yes at the end of the day harbinger celeste has felt pretty terrible I've had a moment or two where opponents just kind of ignored that she was on board and some craziness happened. But beyond that, this card has certainly sucked big time. She is very, very bad. Often a bee, a mecharoo, a firefly, etc. Just not any good. So next up here we have Wisp. I don't really know how Wisp made the cut. I think a lot of people were just memeing that like Murloc Tinyfin and Snowflipper Penguin are objectively better because it ha they have a minion types, beast, and... Uh, Murloc, of course, whereas this doesn't have a minion type, so it's just worse than those. But this card's actually been played in competitive Hearthstone lists. It's been running things like Rogue in the past to set up combo activators. I can remember popping into a few lists here and there. Beyond that, it's certainly not commonly seen. It's not a great card. But to be one of the 10 worst, I don't think it belongs on this spot. Memes aside, Wisp is totally fine for what it is. You guys are crazy for putting Wisp on here. That's, that's a real shame. Already up to the top four here with Magma Rager, a card so bad they printed Ice Rager to make up for it. And guess what? Ice Rager was still so bad that it never got played. It's a pretty bad uh, sign when, when a card is just objectively better than you, and it's still not nearly good enough to even be considered for real Hearthstone play. That's the fate Magma Rager has. And another comment actually very um, nicely put that this card was probably designed and perhaps even referenced by Blizzard to be designed as one of those bad cards that's intentionally bad to teach players certain aspects of the game. In Magma Rager's case, how important health is. It's like, oh, attack's great. I get to hit my opponent so hard. New players might think that, but then they realize like, oh, this is just dead to so many different hero powers. I lose a gigantic resource advantage because this only has one health. That can be a very valuable teaching tool. And it's probably why Magma Rager is so decisively terrible. It's by design, it's by purpose to help people learn what health means and, and how important it is. So sure enough, Magma Rager, one health, you are bad. Maybe not top four bad in my opinion because it's not like actively hurting you, but certainly reasonable enough to put a card like this on this list. So now we're moving into the top three spots and the top three cards 
were all separated by one vote. We had over 1,500 people submit votes. These three were separated by one measly vote. And in fact, this card and our second place card tied. They had the exact same number of votes. First place had one extra vote to give it the top spot. And third is Duskfall and Aviana. Another card that just actively punishes you when you play it, much like our Temperus card. You're giving your opponent the benefit of this card before you are able to redeem that benefit, which means essentially they can kill Aviana and you get nothing while you also just give them this huge tempo advantage because you're obviously not excited to play a 3-7. Yeah, sure, if you can get like an ultimate infestation off the next turn, you might be happy, but your opponent just runs over your Aviana. They get to do something amazing for free and then you're left way farther behind than ever before. As a commenter puts it, the odds of your opponent just dying at their computer are better than the odds of winning with a Duskfall and Aviana. That might actually be true. That's pretty close, I'd say. Statistically insignificant difference there. Uh, I think that's accurate because Duskfall and Aviana really is pretty bad. She's stolen so many games being evolved into her off random evolve effects. She's never made a cut in the deck. Even in wild format, trying to construct a crazy combo around her, I still couldn't really get it to work. This card just seems irredeemable in every way. So now tied here, but I'm giving the guy number two because he deserves it. It's Millhouse Mana Storm. Apparently he was created by the gods and no one has ever found a way to make him playable because his true power can only be understood by his makers. While well, I'm waiting for Ben Brode to come down from the heavens and tell us what makes Millhouse so freaking good because another card that really punishes you when you play him from hands, making your enemy spells cost zero. Essentially they're gonna go off like crazy, blow you up, create tons of value, draw a billion cards, summon a million things, and you lose the game all for a very minor stat upside here of a 4-4 four four instead of, say, a 2-3. So you're getting, like, a few extra stat points. It's definitely not worth the trade-off. Now, I think it is worth noting that Millhouse did see a tiny, tiny, tiny smidge of competitive play at one point in the Call to Arms Paladin meta where you could actually pull this from your deck as a 2-drop and you didn't have to play it. It would just be summoned among other two drops as a 4-4 on board. And that was a cool way to cheat out some fast stats in a deck that was pretty good. Call to Arms, even Style Paladin stuff was pretty OP. Uh, but first off, I don't actually know if this made that deck any better. I think the risk of drawing Millhouse as a dead card probably outweighed any upside there. I think that was probably more of just a fun like thing that still worked because the deck was so good as opposed to the best version of the deck. So yeah, it's probably worth giving that a little weight, but I'd say not too much. I think at the end of the day, Millhouse was still probably bad for that deck. And even beyond that, it took one of the most powerful cards in history to make Millhouse even marginally relevant. Every other scenario, he is absolutely awful and will steal games right out from under you. Millhouse is almost the worst card in Hearthstone. But somehow, <laughs> he's not, and that honor belongs to our good buddy, the Silverback Patriarch, taking the win by a single vote. That's how close it was. You know, I don't think Silverback belongs on this list. He's, again, not an actively terrible card. You generate him in hand, you're like, oh yeah, okay, cool. I get a taunt. You get him off an exotic mount slow these days. You're like, oh yeah, okay, I get a taunt. Uh, of course, he doesn't get played in competitive Hearthstone lists because he's been power crept 75,000 times. They keep printing new versions of three mana taunts that are just objectively better in every way. He's paying this huge price for his beast tag that has never been worth it. Even in the classic Hearthstone set, you've got another beast taunt at three mana that's a 3-3 that's just way better than Silverback. So almost from the beginning, this guy was already outclassed and it's only gotten worse time and time again since then. Uh, but I think most importantly, as someone in the comments put it, Himmet kills Silverback Patriarch. That's right, Himmet Nesting Warrior, a card that didn't make this video, kills Silverback, so that makes him really bad. And uh, this card is literally the weakest card ever printed. There are more than 15 cards, so maybe not 75 billion like I thought, that are simply an upgrade with no downside to this piece of monkey poop. Also, importantly, ties to Hemet. So there's a bit of a theme there across uh, multiple comments. So yeah, Silverback ties to Hemet. That makes him terrible. In fact, the worst card ever in Hearthstone. I would not put him here. My worst card actually belongs to Millhouse. My number two would be Aviana. And I think my number three would be Temperus. Silverback probably wouldn't even make 
my 10 uh, worst cards list. But for you guys, memes or not, uh, decks out for Silverback because he is absolutely the worst card in Hearthstone's history. And there you go, folks. That wraps it up for the 10 worst cards here in Hearthstone. We're going to do another video soon for the 10 best cards. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, it's a heated, heated, a lot of options there. And it's going to be fun to see what actually comes out on top. So that'll be a great video soon. So before you go, please check out the sponsor, Surfshark, down in the description below. Not only does that help me, but I think you'll find a really good deal that you might just like. That said, uh, leave your comments on these cards, cards that should have been on the list, your thoughts on all this in the comments below. Thanks much for watching, and until next time, game on. Thank <laughs> you.